Wow. I can't believe the reaction I got from my last year's top 10 list of best and worst games that I reviewed. They were some of my most watched videos, which was a bit strange to me since they were basically just a glorified clip show. I did review less games this year as I got really busy, but I did come up with a list of 10 games that I reviewed that I didn't like. And to avoid confusion, I want to clarify two things. I only review Wii, Virtual Console, and WiiWare games, nothing else. Also, this is a list of the games that I reviewed this year, not a list of the best games that came out in 2009. So with that said, let's get started. Number 10. Barbie and the Three Musketeers. While young kids might find interest in this game for about an hour, the gameplay itself was pretty boring, and all the levels kind of looked and played the same. The only problem I had with the story was following the plot, as it often didn't make any sense. The first level is you killing rats in a barn, which by the way is the most complicated and large barn I've ever seen. Somehow they stretch out this barn level to three levels. Then some stuff happens, and then you eventually get to the castle. You have to rescue the prince from a hot air balloon, which he is stuck upside down. And Wait a minute, why is Corinne washing the windows? Did she want to become a maid or a musketeer? Number 9. Disney's Think Fast. This title took an interesting idea of making a Disney-themed trivia game, but unfortunately it made it as boring as possible. While the controls work perfectly, it really doesn't matter if the gameplay will put you to sleep. But the problem is that it's all done with so little flair or interest in the subject matter. There are little clips from the host genie of Aladdin fame, but he's only there as the game's host, not the one who reads the questions to you. That seems like a mistake. If anyone could make the questions fun, it would be the genie's character, but he's only there to introduce the rounds and give results, unfortunately. Number 8. Nancy Drew and the White Wolf of Icicle Creek. Why can't publishers just make a mystery game without relying on lame puzzles and tedious clicking on everything in the environment to get the story moving? That's the main problem with this Nancy Drew game, that the story only gets somewhat interesting towards the end, but until then you're having to slog through a bunch of unnecessary obstacles. You're my new maid. In fact, you're my new cook, too. Your cook? Ollie can stop pretending he can even read a recipe, let alone follow one. You'll have even more excuses to talk to the guests, and I won't have to pay anyone. The idea is that you're doing it for show, but then she gives you a huge list of chores to do. Like you're not busy enough. You're trying to save her lodge. She keeps forgetting you're not actually there to be her maid. Or her cook. And then if you don't do something on that huge list that she gives you, she complains about it. Oh, I'm so sorry, lady. Are my free services as your personal servant not up to your high expectations? Number 7. Animal Kingdom Wildlife Expedition. Who knew that a publisher could make a photography game so incredibly boring and tedious? Normally I love these type of games, but this one in particular was so badly done I couldn't stand playing it for too long. You have to look for a rustling in the trees or bushes or dust clouds to signify an animal in that area. You'll have no idea what animal you're going to see until you get out of your car and take a look. How can you not see from your car that there's an elephant or a giraffe out there? They're huge! Number 6. Mad Dog McCree. Ah, oh, Mad Dog. It looks like it's the Wii's turn to get a release of this game. They didn't update or change anything in this version. It's the same version that came out in the 90s. But at least the biggest positive I could say about this game is that you get three titles on one disc for the price of one. But since they all suck, it really doesn't matter. Now, I think they should have added an extra bounty hunter mission where you had to track down the carpenter of these towns. He's obviously a crook with his piss poor handrail construction. I lost count of how many times a bad guy would break through a handrail. If it's going to break that easily, then the guy who installed it should be ashamed. Now, the continues in this game were much better than the other games. They only made you replay the scene that you were fighting in. However, they did replay the same intro of the cutscene of the stage that you're currently in over and over again. In Chinatown, if you end up stiff, it's not from too much starch. Imagine if every time I screwed up on doing these voice... In Chinatown, if you end up stiff, it's not from too much starch. Imagine if every time I screwed up on these voiceovers, you'd have to hear the inter... Mm. In Chinatown, if you end up stiff, it's not from too much starch. Number 5. Ninja Reflex. I bought this game for $5, and I found that a fair price for the content the game holds. Imagine my surprise when I found out the publishers originally asked for $40 for this game. They've got to be kidding. With the limited and overall boring gameplay this title has, I can't believe anyone thought it would sell at that price point. It's shameful. 
It would often not read my positions correctly. But what's funny is that sometimes I just flailed my hands about and it would read it as the correct block. This was the only minigame where the motion controls were a problem, and you would think that would make it the worst of the minigames. But that honor goes to the two stupidest and hardest to pronounce games on this collection. Hashi and Hataru. Hataru is a game where you have to catch fireflies. They make your cursor disappear and you have to guess when the cursor is over the firefly and then press a button when you're over them. And then there's Hashi or fly catching with chopsticks and putting them in a bowl. <laughs> Number four. Neighborhood Games. This one just pissed me off. Not only did they lock most of the 24 games that were advertised, the ones that were available to play were some of the most boring or badly controlled games. Plus, some of those neighborhood games were really messed up. Now, for every game you beat, you'll unlock a different game. Usually, it was just an offshoot of the game you just played. Lawn Darts Baseball and Bumper Shuffleboard were interesting, but when they started having us throw balls at animals that were darting back and forth across the screen, I officially checked out of this game. One, animal abuse is not fun or a game. And two, how on earth could you call this a neighborhood game? I personally don't remember ever playing a game when I was growing up where a bunch of animals just ran back and forth and our goal is to hit as many of them as we could. Number three, My Sims Party. There were 50 mini games in this collection. The publisher seemed to have taken the super monkey ball approach to game design. Quantity over quality. Sure, there's a bunch of games to play, but if they all suck, they could have 2,000 of them, and it wouldn't really matter because nobody would play them. Here's an example of one of the more stimulating mini games. Which one's the same banana? All right, no, it's not, no, it's this one. Woohoohoohoo! I picked the right banana! In your faces! Number two. Pirates, the hunt for Blackbeard's booty! While the last game on this list had a staggering 50 boring minigames to play, this game went the opposite direction by only offering five games. Woo! Wouldn't you know though, they were either controlled poorly or the game itself was too dull to play more than once. I have saved the absolute worst for last, Squid Ball Sabotage or Croquet. At the very least, the last four games were at least believable in a Pirates game. But croquet? It would have been better if they put bowling in the game. Cause then at least you could say they were using cannonballs. If you've never played croquet before, you have to hit a ball with a mallet in between a bunch of hoops. So of course the publishers had to pirate it up so they had you hitting squids instead of balls. But of course in real life, if somebody actually did that, the squid would most likely explode. Number one. Yamaha Supercross. The graphics were ugly, the controls were completely broken, and the gameplay was monotonous. Overall, it felt like a port of an N64 game. This has got to be one of the most boring games I've ever played. They put the least amount of effort into making the game, so I figured I would do the same with this review. The publishers took a somewhat interesting concept for the game and made it completely dull by keeping it too simple. You should skip this game because it sucks. Well, that's my list of the worst games that I reviewed in 2009. But in my next video, I'm going to tell you which were my favorite games to review this year. But until then, please don't buy these games.